Hey, how's it going? My name is Brian Allen. I'm a freelance illustrator. I get asked all the time what my brush settings are, uh, what my pressure sensitivity is, and what size I set up my document. So I just wanted to make a really quick video showing you how I set up a document, what my brush settings are, and what the pressure sensitivity is that I use. Alright, so I'm going to open up uh, Clip Studio Paint right here and we are going to go to the Wacom settings menu and bring this up. Um, I have uh, different pressure sensitivity for different programs, okay? So in Clip Studio Paint, I like to work one step above firm when I'm inking, so the tip feel would be right here. Sometimes I'll actually take it one step further. Okay, but usually this is fine for me, and this really helps me get a much uh, more. Con it allows me to get more control from thick to thin when I do it this way. On the flip side of that, when I'm using the pencil tool uh, or the airbrush tool, when when I'm either sketching or coloring artwork, I always bring it back down to here. Okay, but we'll leave it there for now. Um, none of this other stuff you've got to change. Okay. Now in Photoshop, I find it to be actually the opposite. For some reason, um, I usually, it was there for a second, but usually I have it in the middle or even one step towards soft. Okay, so in Clip Studio Paint, there are actually a bunch of options um, here in the pen pressure settings, okay? I've actually tried playing with this before and I did not like the results. Um, it really, and in fact, there were some things, could have been my imagination, but there were some things that I felt like it made the program buggy. Uh, like there were some crashes and there were some instances where things didn't register. I could be alone on that. If anyone else uses this menu and uh, has success with it, let me know um, because I'd like to give it another shot if it if it works right now each of my brushes uh, that I sell brushes on my website uh, clipstudiopaintbrushes.com and they are all let's grab one of my brushes here um, yeah this is a good one so if you go into the settings for the brush size I like most of them to start out at a much lower dip and then come up quickly like this. For whatever reason, that works way better for my hand. Uh, and one final note, I learned this trick from, from another artist, but you get much greater pen variation by using a very, very large size brush. Okay, um, And of course that's relative, but I, I find that if I'm inking with, um, let's say, like a 10 pixel brush, uh, it really limits me to the kind of variation I can get. So this brush is, is one of my favorites here, and it's already set to 60, okay? So that's, that's fairly large. I mean, this thing goes up to 2,000, <laughs> uh, which seems kind of silly, but, um, but I've got it at 60. I know uh, there's a great artist um, who uses... I think it's like 80 or even 100 pixels. Uh, that to me ends up being too hard to control, so I end up just using around around 60. And you'll see most of my ink brushes that I sell are set up that way. For new documents, um, I've explained this in a, a couple other videos, but I always, when inking, work at 600 dpi. Okay and I work at full size. Well, what does full size mean? Uh, full size means, to me, the way it's going to print out. So, if I'm working on a t-shirt that's going to be printed at 13 inches by 19 inches, then my document will be 13 inches by 19 inches at 600 dpi. Okay. Now, 600 dpi is overkill because for a t-shirt, uh, the maximum you need is just 300 dpi and in fact a lot of t-shirt printers only need 200 sometimes even 150 all right um, but by working at a 600 dpi resolution and again 
could be my imagination, but I have heard this from a lot of other artists. You get you get a lot more variation in the brush size, and it seems like you get more control. Uh, the downside of this is that if you do not have a fast computer, uh, this is going to slow it down, right? So I can work at documents of 20 inches by 20 inches at 600 dpi um, with no problem. If you're interested to see what kind of setup I use, if you go to my website, I have a frequently asked questions section that outlines all the hardware um, that, that I'm using uh, specifically. Right now I'm using uh, one of the newer iMacs. Um, okay, then when I go to coloring, I always down res it to 300. All right, why do I do that? Uh, the reasons I just explained. Basically, 600 is overkill. You don't need that high of a resolution. And when you start painting using the airbrush or blending tools, those tools require a lot more um, processing power. So if you're working at 600 DPI at a 20-inch document, then um, it's gonna it's gonna ruin your day, right? Okay, and, and one really quick final note. Uh, a lot of people have asked me why uh, my brushes have like a pixelated edge. And let's zoom way in. I mean, we're zooming way the heck in. This is like 400%. Um, and this document is already quite big. What you see here is kind of like a, a jagged, uh, anti-aliased edge, right? When I ink, I almost always select right here, none, so no anti-aliasing, right? There's a couple reasons I do that. Um, one, this was one way the digital comic book artists used to work, uh, or uh, probably still do, but when they would scan in their inks on paper, they would convert it to a bitmap, so things were either 100% white or 100% black. And what this did was it made the coloring and the flatting process a lot easier because you can very easily make selections. Um, and I'll, let me show you something real quick, right? All right, let me demonstrate this here. So let's just draw a circle. My circle, right? Um, with anti-aliasing turned off. So it's got that jaggy edge, right? Let's add a little bit of aliasing here, or just to demonstrate, I'm going to add a lot, okay? And we're going to draw the same circle. Now, these two circles look the same from here, you know? Um, and when we go in, you can see that this one actually reminds you kind of more of a Photoshop brush stroke, right? And this one is jagged. This would appear as if you were using the pencil tool in Photoshop. Um, the pencil tool is is a anti-aliased brush. It's just black or white, period. There's no gray. There's nothing in between, right? So when we try to use, um, when we try to fill something in here, let's grab our paint bucket. Now just make sure all the settings are okay. Um, Okay, I'm going to fill that with green, let me zoom out, and then I'm going to fill that with green, right? When you zoom in closer, the green goes right up to the black, 100%. There's no gaps, nothing. But when you do that here, as soon as it starts hitting these faded gray pixels, uh, it, it creates this like ghost-like effect, right? Now, one cool thing about uh, Clip Studio Paint that Photoshop doesn't have is that you can set the paint bucket tool so that it scales. So I can do area scaling, like let's do two or two or three pixels, okay? Um, that will grow the selection into your ink. So that is one way to get around it, but I personally just prefer to work anti-aliased anyway because of the second reason. The second reason is when this ink, when this line art prints, um, it's going to be extra sharp. All right, it's going to look uh, much better, especially when you print it at a smaller size. Okay, it's real easy for us to zoom in here and and think that this looks like garbage, but when this is printed at, you know, let's say, okay, like this, 
This would be printed on a t-shirt. This is what you're looking at. Neither of those examples look any different. But when they're printed out, the anti-aliased one is going to be a bit sharper looking. And uh, the other reason that I really prefer working with anti-aliased inks is because I set up a lot of t-shirts. And when you're working with t-shirt uh, t-shirt artwork, a lot of times you're going to have to uh, remove the line art. You're going to have to knock out the line art from the rest of the artwork. Because let's say, for example, you're printing on a navy blue shirt and you want to have the line art not be black, but actually be the dark color of that navy blue. Well, if you are painting with a uh, anti, or I'm sorry, yes, an anti-aliased uh, brush, and then you try to make a selection of that line art so that you can knock it out, you can delete it from the rest of the artwork underneath. What's going to happen is you're going to get an imperfect selection. Now, when you're zoomed out, you may not know the difference, but when it comes down to it, it's going to create just enough of a little bit of a ghosting that it might cause you problems when you're printing. The reason I like to draw with uh, alias brushes is that I find, for whatever reason, the computer processes those lines much faster. There's not much lag on anything that I'm doing here in Clip Studio Paint um, with, with my Mac, but I find that there is absolutely zero lag with the anti-alias brushes. Let me see if I can try. Alright, thanks for watching. So I hope that answered some of your questions. If you have any more questions, please post them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe or like the video or comment. Or If you're interested in purchasing my brushes, you can get them at clipstudiopaintbrushes.com or flylanddesigns.com in my shop. Um, and I'm also selling uh, art prints and stickers, so check them out. All right, take it easy.